Back in April, I was on the phone with one of my buddies from Indiana, a priest buddy, and like everyone else, we were talking about the coronavirus. Kind of like that's still kind of the main subject uh, today as well, many months later. But on the phone that, that day, he said, Carlson, you know, when this whole thing is over, I am going to throw the biggest party ever for my parish and for our staff. He's like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to sit around and we're going to drink Coronas and it's going to be awesome. And he was so confident, I think, that this was, uh, was going to happen sooner rather than later that I'm pretty sure he'd already started buying some Coronas, thinking they might go out of stock. Obviously, we're still waiting to throw that party, that celebration. He is, and I'm sure all of this will have some great celebration when we're finally clear of the coronavirus. Even a couple weeks ago, I remember listening on the, the radio, to the relevant radio, so I was getting ready in the morning, and the, the, it must have been the top of the hour because the, the news anchor had mentioned, you know, and yesterday, at late afternoon, whatever it was, the FDA approved a vaccine for the United States. And he went on to say, and now it's that, that expectant waiting, but this joy is already overcoming us, this excitement is already coming over us, that soon and very soon, Hopefully that, that vaccine will be readily available uh, to everyone. And as we know, it's being rolled out right now. I know of a medical professional who received it three days ago. And so it's, it's happening uh, here in the United States, here in Minnesota. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. And yet, even if the coronavirus goes completely away, is that going to be the biggest celebration we have? Hasn't there been greater things in the history of the world that have happened? We could say, of course, yes. And I'm not downplaying the coronavirus at all. It's, it's a serious illness. It's a serious virus. Uh, and we know that many people have been suffering because of it. Many people have, have passed away because of it uh, as well. But we go back in history and we think also of the different plagues that have afflict, afflicted humanity, of wars that have afflicted uh, the whole world, World War I, World War II, all the wars, and we see uh, what devastation that can happen. And once again, what great celebration there is uh, when the, maybe a war is over. Think back to, to V-Day, World War uh, II, and the great celebrations that were happening in the United States. That peace had somewhat come around the world. I was still waiting for that to happen, of course. But it got me thinking even more of well, what is the greatest thing, the greatest overcoming of any sort of plague or illness that has ever happened. And what that is, is what we celebrate today, the birth of Christ. Because why is it such a big deal? Why every single December 25th do we come together to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? Well, we have to go back a little bit before the birth of Christ, to see what was happening. I mean, we can go all the way back to creation, the creation of Adam and Eve. And they're created out of love by God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, that, that, that communion of love, uh, that overwhelming amount of love, which then created humanity so that we could share in this love. And how are we created, by the way? Humanity is created in the image and likeness of God. Isn't that beautiful? We're created in the image and likeness of God. And Adam and Eve, there they were uh, in the Garden of, of Eden, essentially paradise, and they had everything. They didn't have to do a dang thing. They sat around just chilling, not worrying about a thing. And that was good. It was very good. We hear you know, God describe us, and the world was good. And yet, Adam and Eve do what? They choose to go against God. They choose to sin. And in doing so, they brought original sin into all of humanity, turning away from God, being cast out of Eden, being cast out of paradise, and this great chasm now, separating humanity from God. And so ever since then, ever since then, 
prophet after prophet after prophet in the Old Testament has said what? A Savior is going to come to redeem us, to bring us back in union with God. Not that God had abandoned his people, we know this, but still there was that separation. There wasn't that that union anymore. So prophet after prophet proclaims that someone is going to come who is to bring light into the midst of darkness. As we heard in Isaiah today, as we heard as well in our gospel account uh, from the gospel of John, right? In that the, the light came into the world. And that light is who? It's Jesus Christ coming into a world that at that time, oof, it was messed up. You think the world is messed up now? It was messed up even more back then. Think about the Israelite people. They've been hearing they are the promised people, that God is going to be with them at all the time. Even though there's that separation, he's still going to take care of them. And yet the, the Jewish religion is almost almost wiped off the face of the earth. They have a puppet king in Herod over, you know, ruling over them. And it's just dark. It is, it is a bad time in the history of the world. And this is when our Lord and Savior comes. But when he comes, how does he come? He doesn't come with any sort of great fanfare. He comes instead to a poor, essentially peasant family in Mary and Joseph. Yes, Joseph is a line of David, so he has that royalty uh, behind him. But they're so poor, there's no place for them to stay with any relatives. They, don't even, they can't have any place in the inn, nothing to be able, you know, even then at the inn, it'd be like, well, I got more money than that person, kick the person out. They don't have any money. So there they are in a manger when our Lord and our Savior comes. This light in the midst of darkness. And what does he do when he comes into the world? Well, in the incarnation, he humbles himself to share in our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. As St. Thomas Aquinas says, because of Jesus Christ and his incarnation, it makes us like God. We are like God. He goes on to point out, we're not God, and that's important to remember, but we are like God because of his humbling of himself so that we may have what? So that we may have eternal life, a life that comes to no end because this world, by the way, we know that this world is fleeting, that it has a definitive end. But with God, we have this life eternal, eternal with him where there is no more suffering, there is no more pain, there is no more illness, there is no more death. And all we have to do is follow him. Jesus says over and over again in the Gospels, come to me all you who labor and are weary, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you everything that you need. John chapter 6, he goes on to say, whoever eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood will live forever. Why? Because we are able to receive him truly present in the Eucharist the body and blood of Christ, to come and receive him daily if we so desire and let him transform us. And every single Mass that we come to, what do we call it? We call it the Eucharistic celebration. We could use some, some, some modern-day terms, the Eucharistic party. Ever think of Mass like a party, by the way? I know it's like the party you may go to but it's actually a better celebration because in coming to celebrate uh, Jesus Christ, in coming to celebrate the reception of the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving, we are able to share in his divinity. And so every single Mass that we come to, 
every single time we come and pray in this celebration. It's a greater party. It's a greater celebration than my buddy is going to have once the coronavirus comes to an end, which is nothing wrong with sitting around and, and having a corona uh, in moderation, by the way. But coming here is even greater. And this is why we celebrate the birth of Christ not just every year on December 25th. We celebrate the birth of Christ every single day, thanking him for the gift of himself, thanking him for the gift of grace, of peace, and most importantly, eternal life.